Now you're taking a bath and there's a small earthquake and the water starts to oscillate in the bathtub, uh, but it doesn't move in the center, okay? And the tub is 1.5 meters long uh, and you measure 10 oscillations in 22 seconds because that's what you would do, right, in an earthquake. And they want to know what's the wavelength and speed of the waves on the surface of the water. So let's draw it out. When in doubt, draw it out. So we're going to draw the bathtub before the waves. So we just have a uniform water. It's, you know, it's hot bath like that. Let's draw you getting into the bath. Oh, it's not. Let's not, let's not draw. Um, let's think about how this is going to move, right? So if it's uh, going up and down and back and forth, but still in the center, you could draw it like this. You could say that the water goes like that. And then a half cycle later, it goes like that. The end's going up and down. But water isn't going to move that way because water is incompressible. The volume of the water has to stay constant. So this would have a case where the volume of the water increases and then decreases. You can't do that. So the water would actually move like this. Um, it'll go, if this is the natural flat position of the water, it would be high on this side and low on that side. And then a half cycle later, it would do that. Now, in the end, you actually don't have to have intuition for how water moves in an earthquake to get this problem right. Mathematically, these will give you the same answer. So it wasn't required to know that the water would really do that. Okay. So the first question is, uh, what is the wavelength? This is 1.5 meters. What is the wavelength? So this is basically an open, open system. The water is free to move and have a large amplitude on the ends. We put a node in the middle, so we're at the fundamental wavelength. So if we wanted to say, what are the wavelengths of an open, open system, we know that it's 2L over M, where M equals 1, 2, 3, blah, blah. Uh, we know this is M equals 1 because there's no shorter, so the, the, the fundamental is the shortest, or the, the longest wavelength you can fit, and there's no longer wavelength that would work. Right? This is from one maxima to another maxima. If you made it longer, you can't put a node at the end. This is, this is the longest one. So if you say m equals 1, then the wavelength is simply 3 meters. You can also see that visually, right? So this is half of a wave. Another 1.5 meters would give you the whole wave. So lambda, in this case, the wavelength of the wave is 3 meters. The second question, what is the speed? It's a speed. Um, for speed, we know that there's sort of two equations that we think about for wave speed. One is related to the properties of the system. So for a string, a clamped string, the wave speed is the square root of the tension over the mass density. There's always an equation related to the physical properties of the system. For a surface wave on water, we have not given you such an equation because we don't want to think about it, it's complicated. So you go with the other definition or the other way to get the wave speed, and that is the frequency times the wavelength of a wave itself, some sinusoidal wave. In this case, we know both those parameters. We know the frequency because we know, we measured it was 10 oscillations every 22 seconds. So 10 over 22 hertz, and the wavelength was 3 meters, meters per second, and you get 1.36 meters per second. That is 